Hi there, my name is Sandy Allnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to talk about frosting cookies, both edible and paper. We're going to do paper first. I got the tiny tags from Lawn Fawn and I thought they were so cute. They looked like little cookies. So I decided I was going to make a bunch of tags colored like cookies. And then I purchased from a friend of mine cookies for Christmas. She frosts them and I'm going to go visit her after I get this video done and shoot her frosting some cookies so you can see how the pros do it. So I am doing it the Copic way, <laughs> just coloring with some Copic markers. I started with each one of them with an E3-1 around the outside edge and since it has the little stitched edge it kind of gives you where the frosting should be. You get a nice fairly even line around it if you follow along with that. So I used an E3-1 and an E3-5 to create something that looks like a cooked cookie base and then I'm going to color the frosting. I'm, I'm not sure if I can call this a secret to frosting, but you kind of want to find some shapes in there that you can make the highlights. It might help if you look up like a glassy heart, if you're trying to do a heart cookie, and see where the highlights and the shadows lie. I did these just out of my head, so they may not be correct, but when you're talking about frosting, it's kind of okay. People aren't going to really worry about it too much because all of these came out looking like cookies even though I was making it up as I went along. So I'm trying to put some outline of dark color around the outside, but some is medium. I don't want an actual heavy dark outline around the outside edge because that would just make it look like it's outlined. I don't want to make it look like it's a little more natural. So I'm using my favorite red combination, at least the dark and the medium are my favorite reds. All the other reds, the lighter ones work well. But I am going to do something deliberately on this one so I can give you a tip on some blending while we're doing this. I'm leaving my highlights white and now I'm going back in with my base color again, the R14, and I'm trying to scrub away at the edges of the, the medium color and to try to blend it. And you can see I'm not getting some really good blending. I could have just worked at it a little longer and made it work, but I am going to show you a little quick trick to try to soften some of that out. I'm going to take the medium marker again and just do some really quick flicking across it and then go back in with the medium or with the light again. See how easy that works? And now I'm going to go right over top of the whole thing, all of those highlights with the lightest color and then draw my highlights back in. That gives me another layer of depth and you can see that in the one at the top. It, there's just another a lighter pink because that means that area now only has one coat of that light red rather than multiple coats. Okay, hopefully that is helpful. I'm going to use the same process for most of the rest of these. So I'm going to speed her up a little bit more because I want to save some time for the cookie frosting at the end of the video. And I'm doing the same thing with this with a dark green and G28 and G29 are pretty much the same. So don't stress out if you have one and not the other. You can pick any kind of colors to frost these. You can also frost these any time of year. So don't think of this die set as something that you just need for Christmas because these are really generic shapes. You can do a whole bunch of the heart cookies for your uh, your Valentine's this year. If you if you make Valentine's cookies, these would be great little tags to add on to them. And there's also a stamp set with some to and from types of things that also you can use year round in addition to Christmas. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm doing the same thing with my greens on the star. I made just a couple areas of highlight, those two wings of the star, and then the arc at the bottom. You'll notice that the white signo pen does discolor a little bit, which I don't mind because then it's not a harsh white like highlight, like super highlight, because most of the time you're not going to get that super harsh, and it just kind of fades in there and melts in there and looks much more natural rather than looking like a little pen blob, I guess. White frosting is a little more challenging just because you don't want a whole lot of color in there. You just need enough to make it look like there is some shading. But when I'm going to tie two of these to each one of my cookies, it's not really going to matter. People are going to read them as cookies because they're going to see another one, even if that one doesn't read as frosting. So I'm going to do the same red combination here on the square tag. You could stamp the two from on the outside of these. But as I was coloring them and I flipped one over and I realized that they kind of go through on the back and a lot of people do freak out about seeing things on the back and even though I don't for this particular one since I am 
always remiss in mentioning what happens to the back of my paper. Copic marker blends in the back of paper, so that's why it does that. It's supposed to. Don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. But I did die cut a whole extra bunch of these so that I could add another one to the back of each one, and that would make them a little sturdier as well as in a fuzzy fashion here apparently my camera was focused on the table surface rather than my my work but then I can also color on the back so I'm coloring with the same two colors the two browns that I used for the outside edge of the cookie you could also go around the side edge of the papers while you're doing this part too and that way you're gonna cover up any of that white paper that might show along the edges and really make it look like a little cookie and here I'm just scribbling. I'm not worried about making it even. If you've ever looked at the bottom of a cookie, sometimes they're a little more brown at the outside, but it doesn't matter a whole lot. So here's that set that has lots of sentiments. See, there's an enjoy and thanks and other sentiments with love, so you don't have to actually have them only for Christmas, but there are a few Christmas specifics. There are some to and froms in there, some happy holidays, some for you, Lots of different ones that you can use for cookies any time of year. And here they are finished. I've got them on seven inch strings so I can tie them onto my cookies. And now let's go over to Sheila's house. When I got to Sheila's house, she had a bunch of gingerbread men cut out and she treated me to a little surprise. So she started showing me how she does her frosting. She puts the brown frosting here on this top portion and mushes it around with a little pick. The frosting is the consistency of about Elmer's glue so that it moves around a lot and you want to get it really smooth so this moves the frosting so it's all over the place. If you just squish all the frosting into the whole thing without leaving spaces and moving it around then you could end up with too much frosting but shaking it makes it all kind of smooth and shiny and even. She puts them into this little machine that blows air so it dries them a little faster so that the frosting doesn't bleed into each other. But look at this. Then she got out the dark brown frosting and started putting on antlers. So upside down, that is going to be a reindeer cookie. Isn't that cute? So she'll put a little bit of brown here for the ears, just a little line down the middle. And then add some red for a nose and do the same kind of thing, like squish some red on and then use the little pick to move it around to make sure he's got a good shiny nose. And next will be eyeballs. Squish some white frosting. And she said sometimes she'll just use a bunch of white and black frosting to make eyeballs and just dry them on a piece of wax paper and save them to just stick on cookies later. Good idea. And put a little smiley face on him! Isn't that cute? And then she puts them in there to dry them further. And they should kind of dry about a day before you wrap them up or anything so that you don't end up in trouble getting your fingerprint in them. And then she turned me loose. I was excited. So I had gotten to do a couple of the, the cookies myself and I decided to do them kind of silly because that's how I am. That's how I roll. So one of them is going to be a normal one, this one. And then this guy is going to be a little crazy because I thought the little lines made it look like he had glasses on. So I joined his eyeballs, <laughs> gave him glasses, and instead of having regular eyes like this guy has, he's going to have cross eyes, because he can. And then I'll put the regular oval nose on one, and I decided to try to see what a round nose would look like on the other guy. And then put a mouth on one, big smiley face, on the regular cookie, and a little uh, duck face on <laughs> my silly cookie. So there we go. It was so much fun to buy cookies from her and then get to decorate a couple myself as well. Way, way, way fun. She also sent me to work practicing on some other things. So I played with making some snowman cookies and airbrushed a little shading on them. Airbrush on these is extremely challenging. So I had some trouble. These are some of my practice ones. She gave me to do some landscape things and they didn't work out, but they tasted awfully darn good. So after I got everything finished, I just put my cookies into little plastic bags along with the beautiful tags that I already made on them. Just tied them around the twisty and my cookies are ready to be gifted. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. 
I will see you in the next one. Hit that subscribe button if you would like to get more videos from me. You can click for more on the blog to get stills you can pin to your Pinterest and watch other videos if you desire. And I will talk to you guys later if I don't see you before Christmas. Have a merry one.